I don't think it's a coincidence that the Dead Sea Scrolls calendar that the Qumran people used is the only calendar in the ancient world that creates a time window for the Messiah's arrival that matches Jesus. Okay, I don't think that's a coincidence. This is a zodiac mosaic in a Jewish synagogue. There are a lot of these, a couple dozen of them, that archaeologists have found. And you would look at this and say, well, you know, these Jews must have been pagans then. No, no, they had a different perception of what was going on in the sky and who's in charge and what it means, as opposed to the pagans. Pagan astrology, astronomy, there really wasn't much of a difference in the ancient world is more like what we look, what we think of today with horoscopes, that individual birth signs, you know, when I was born, what day, what's going on, this, that, that determines my fate, it determines my personality, it determines the outcomes of my life. No, it doesn't do any of those things. A Jew would say, that's heresy. Only God is sovereign. What you can tell though is that God is working a plan because God's plans are linked to time. So we need to be paying attention to what the skies are doing because they might tell us something about what God is about to do. Now the people who were really into this would be the people at Qumran where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found. Uh, they have a number of astronomical texts there. They track this like, let's put it this way, they separated from the Pharisees. They thought the Pharisees were liberals because the Pharisees used a calendar they didn't like. It's what, you know, we, 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 we hear that and we think it's crazy, but they were, they were that serious about it. But I want to move from this idea that there was a Jewish conception of the skies were important, what's going on here, because they telegraph certain things, to Revelation 12. Now, I can't prove this, but I suspect that what Paul was thinking, we actually have recorded in Revelation 12. But John, okay, in Revelation, says this. You know, several times he says, I looked up in the sky and saw. What if John actually meant what he said? What if he's keying parts of Revelation to astronomical signage? What if he's doing that? A great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head, a crown of 12 stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pains and the agony of giving birth. And another sign appeared in heaven, behold, a great red dragon with seven heads and 10 horns and on his heads, seven diadems. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth so that when she bore her child, he might devour it. She gave birth to a male child one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. But her child was caught up to God and to his throne. Okay, verse 5 is crystal clear. It's quoting a messianic psalm. Okay, it's quoted elsewhere about Jesus. This is a reference to the birth of the Messiah. The notion of being caught up to God and his throne is a, is a notion of the resurrection and ascension. But before that, you get all this astronomical imagery. Now, I'm not the first one to suggest this, uh, but I suspect very strongly that this is what Paul was thinking about when he said, you know, hey, you know, have, have people heard about, you know, the Savior? You know, heard, heard, like, heard, you know, what's going on here? And you know, again, you're expecting to say no. And, and he says, well, yeah, they actually have. And then he quotes Psalm 19. See, Revelation 12 doesn't exist yet. Okay, Revelation is the last book of the New Testament. But he quotes Psalm 19 and says, yeah, they've heard. The heavens declare the glory of God, so on and so forth. All these verbs of communication. Paul is associating the knowledge of the Messiah King, his arrival, with something going on in the skies. That much we can say. And Revelation 12 gives us a pretty easy thing to track in an astronomy program. Now, I'm gonna go through some of this, 
But before I do it, let me say what I'm not saying. There are those in evangelical circles, their belief was that you could look at the constellations of the skies and they told you the entire plan of salvation. Like they went through the Romans road in the heavens. I don't believe that. Okay, that overclaims the data. What I do believe is that, like the Magi, there's something going on at a certain time in history that told them there's going to be a divine king born in Bethlehem. Saddle up the camels. We have to go see. Jews would have noticed it. Gentiles, like the, the Magi, would have noticed it because they were watching. And they believed that the creator God, the God of Israel, was capable of telegraphing stuff like this. I don't think it's a coincidence that the Dead Sea Scrolls calendar that the Qumran people used is the only calendar in the ancient world that creates a time window for the Messiah's arrival that matches Jesus. Okay, I don't think that's a coincidence. So having said that, let's get into what I think we can claim. On your screen, you see a few things. There's the sun and the moon, and then there's a line. The line is called the ecliptic. This is a line that astronomers will draw to track the movement of the constellations. You notice the sun and the moon there. The sun is in the midst of the woman, the virgin, Virgo. Okay, and Virgo, again, there's different ways to understand the 12 stars around her head, depending on which astronomer you, know, you, you would read that uh, you can get 12 stars in this or that method. But again, she's the woman with the 12 stars, the virgin who is about to give birth. The sun is in her midst. It's Revelation 12. And the moon is at her feet. You'll notice above her head, I've included, I've let my astronomy program show Regulus and Jupiter. Now, they are not mentioned in Revelation 12, but if you put the information in Revelation 12 into an astronomy program, this is produced. What's the big deal about Regulus and Jupiter? Jupiter was the king planet because it's the biggest one. Regulus was viewed as the king star because of its brightness. Okay, here, they are overlapped. They are superimposed on each other. If you are one of these old ancient astronomy guys, that's gonna draw your attention because both are associated with kingship. Constellation Virgo is the only constellation that represents a woman. For 20 days, Virgo was clothed with the sun, but the exact day when the moon was under her feet at the same time, and by the way, when Regulus and Jupiter intersect, and this is the view over Jerusalem, by the way, that could only occur during an 80 minute period within those 20 days. Okay, astronomy is linked to time so we can calculate. You'll notice I put the stick figures in now for the constellation so you can see this a little better. We've got in the center there, that's Virgo. She doesn't look as attractive as a stick figure. <laughs> Sun, moon at her feet. Jupiter and Regulus co-joined. And what is the constellation above Virgo? It's the lion, it's Leo. What does that mean to a Jew? The lion is the sign of what? The tribe of Judah, okay? Judah, Regulus and, and Jupiter are intersecting in Leo. What was that king, you know, what tribe was he supposed to be from? Oh yeah, yeah, Judah. And you notice below her feet, in modern astronomy programs, we have two constellations. One is Libra, the other is Scorpio. In the ancient world, they were one constellation, and it was like a scorpion with pinchers. And scorpions were at times referred to it as a dragon, but you have another option for the dragon. That is Hydra, also located below Virgo, but off the ecliptic. Doesn't really matter, you got two choices. Okay, he's ready to devour the child when the child is born. There's a small window of time when all of these things are present. September 11, 3 BC date also corresponded, what a coincidence, to Rosh Hashanah, Tishri 1. 
New Year's Day for Jews, and the Day of Trumpets. Tishri 1 was also the New Year's Day of the civil calendar, according to the calendar accepted in Judah during the divided monarchy. In other words, it marked the first day of the reign of every new Davidic king. What a coincidence.